I am Wendy Howard Cooper. I am the Division Director at DCR for Dam Safety and Floodplain Management. And we are here today to talk about our Dam Safety Awareness Day to highlight this beautiful, beautiful dam that we have here and the renovation that occurred, the rehabilitation that has occurred. Um, today is National Dam Safety Day and it is to commemorate the great flood of 1889 in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Um, this was a catastrophic flood that really occurred due to several days of really heavy rainfall that exacerbated some poorly designed rehabilitation and repairs to this dam and it resulted in this complete failure that killed more than 2,000 people. That is why Dam Safety Awareness Day, the National Day, was created. And so each, each year, May 31st, Virginia celebrates that or acknowledges and commemorates that for that purpose. Today, specifically, we are here to celebrate the rehabilitation of Hearthstone Lake Dam. It is a beautiful day and a beautiful dam. We know that dam rehabilitations are expensive. They take an extraordinarily long period of time, especially when we're talking about a dam this size. And it is a coordinated effort. As you can tell from the folks who are here today, um, we have a lot of partners who participate in dam safety at various stages of the rehabilitation, and you'll be hearing from them today. Um, you will hear from state, local, and engineers highlighting these efforts so that you are clear about what we're here to celebrate. You can see the photos here. We'll have folks talk about what they are and what they mean. Um, we also want to highlight the importance of dam safety. I know that you all are probably aware of the incident that happened at Bosher Dam yesterday where 12 people went over this low head dam. 10 people were, res were rescued, but as of this morning, um, two people were still missing. Um, we partner with DWR during April to highlight low head dam awareness month um, because those dams are generally and truly called drowning machines they are dangerous um, when you go over them because of the hydraulics that draws people under the dam and you can't escape so we all want to be mindful of low head dam safety and really be reflective and thoughtful about the people who um, were lost yesterday or experienced that event yesterday so I am pleased to introduce Matthew Wells, our agency director. Um, he joined DCR on March 21st, 2002, and I always say it's baptism by fire, because on his first day, we had a dam failure. And it was a failure of a high hazard dam that required an all hands-on response. It was a multi-agency um, response that we had to involve the governor's office to manage the whole process. I think Matt um, really learned a lot about dam safety on that day and in those coming weeks and what has to happen and why dam safety is so critically important to all of us. Um, Matt came to DCR with more than two, two decades of experience in positions related to politics and policy and advocacy. Most recently, he was Senior Regional Manager for State Government Relations for West Rock. He has also held analyst and advisory positions with Department of Motor Vehicles, the Al Alcoholic Beverage Control, and he holds a degree in Foreign Affairs from UVA and a Certificate in Sustainability from VCU. Please welcome Matt Wells. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, you were correct. That was um, that was baptism uh, by fire, and I learned a lot very quickly. I think um, one of the, the most important things I, I learned very quickly was just how great of a team we have, uh, both at DCR and around the state, that they were able to respond uh, to, the, to that situation and avert uh, what could have been a pretty serious disaster. Um, but appreciate everyone uh, joining us uh, this morning for National Dam Safety Awareness Day. Uh, I will have a few more remarks in a minute, but but I want to. Uh, recognize Corey Scott, uh, who is the Assistant Secretary for Natural and Historic Resources for the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, Corey has a background in both state and federal government, 
uh, working for Majority Leader Terry Kilgore and the Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, as Assistant Secretary, he manages a very broad policy portfolio that includes dam safety, and we are very pleased to have him with us here today. Please welcome Corey. Thank you, Matt, and uh, good morning. National Dam Safety Awareness Day was created to encourage and promote individual and community responsibility for dam safety, as well as to provide information on what steps can be taken to prevent future catastrophic dam failures. A secondary goal is to promote the benefits that dams offer to communities. For more than 30 years, the federal government has been working to protect Americans from dam, fail dam failure through the National Dam Safety Program. The program, which is led by FEMA, is a partnership of the states, federal agencies, and other stakeholders to encourage individual and community responsibility for dam safety. New investments in dam safety through the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act promise significant investments to make dams safer in our communities. Governor Glenn Youngkin has proclaimed dam May 31st Dam Safety Awareness Day in Virginia, encouraging individuals and communities to understand the flood risk associated with dam failures and to take actions that increase dam safety. Director Wells, if you'll please join me at the podium uh, for the reading of the proclamation. So I've got the proclamation here. Uh, I think what I'll do is either hand it, hand it to you. All right. By the virtue of the authority vested by the Constitution in the Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, there is hereby officially recognized Dam Safety Awareness Day. Whereas there are more than 2,600 state regulated dams in Virginia, the majority of which are privately owned and are required by state law to be properly constructed, altered, and operated to ensure the protection of life and property. And whereas dams in Virginia range from low to high hazard depending on their size, location, and downstream development, and whereas the Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation is the state agency responsible for regulation of dams in Virginia, addressing aging and deficient dams for risks they present to the public, and whereas by 2025, according to the, the Association of Dam Safety Officials, seven in 10 dams will be 50 years or older. Whereas National Dam Safety Awareness Day was established to memorialize the South Fork Dam failure in Johnstown, Pennsylvania that occurred on May 31st, 1889, the worst dam-related disaster in our nation's history, causing 2,200 deaths. And whereas Na National Dam Safety Awareness Day is intended to highlight potential dangers of improperly constructed or maintained dams across the United States. Whereas all owners, government officials, first responders, emergency management personnel, downstream residents, and citizens should be aware of the importance of dam safety and the need to properly maintain and operate dams. And whereas Virginians recognize and appreciate dam safety personnel from the Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation for their tireless efforts to protect the people of the Commonwealth from hazards of dam failures. Now, therefore, I, Glenn Youngkin, do recognize May 31st, 2020 as Dam Safety Awareness Day in our Commonwealth of Virginia, and I call this observance to the attention of our citizens. It is my pleasure to present this proclamation to you, the Director of uh, the Department of Conservation and Recreation, which is the agency that regulates Virginia's more than 2,600 dams. Thank you all for being here. Director. Well, thank you, Corey, and thank you uh, to Governor Youngkin uh, for highlighting uh, this day and this important issue. Uh, dam safety is a shared responsibility, and DCR's message today is threefold. Know your risk, know your role, and know the benefits of dam safety. Dam safety matters. According to the Association of Dam Safety Officials, there were more than 90,000 dams in the United States. Approximately one-third of these pose high or significant hazard to life and property if failure occurs. There are more than 2,600 dams in the Commonwealth of Virginia that are regulated by DCR's Division of Dam Safety. More than half of these are privately owned. Currently, we know that 25% of the regulated dams in the Commonwealth of Virginia are in fair or satisfactory condition, but more than 70% of regulated dams need further evaluation to determine their condition assessment. Dams can be useful flood reduction systems, but if they fail, flooding can be catastrophic to life and property. As the number of buildings, businesses, and people increase near a dam, so can the risk to life and property, 
property if dams are not properly maintained and upgraded to account for these changes. In fact, smaller agricultural dams in your area may now be considered high or significant hazard dams due to recent development. Failure of such a dam could cause death, injury, or significant damage to property. According to the Association of State Dam Safety Officials, 7 in 10 dams will be 50 years or older by 2025, and as these dams age, they may be at greater risk of failure. Our goal is always to avoid dam failures, but there are steps that we can take to ensure that we're protected in the event that that happens. I urge each of you to use the tools on DCR's Dam Safety and Floodplain Management website to determine your proximity to dams, and please share these tools with your friends and neighbors. If you are in a dam break inundation zone, it's critically important that you consider getting flood insurance. And if you know, or you or anyone knows, that has, if you or anyone you know has concerns about an area dam, please contact DCR. Our dam safety staff helps dam owners comply with state regulations and serves as a resource for the engineering community and emergency responders. We are here to help. And at this time, I'd like to transition to the dam we see here today. The Hearthstone Lake Dam, which, which recently won an Outstanding Dam Rehabilitation Award from the Virginia Association of Lakes and Watersheds, is an ideal place to talk about dam safety in Virginia. And I'd like to welcome Michael Jimenez, the Dam Management Technician for the Headwaters Soil and Water Conservation District, and Dr. Edwin Martinez, the State Conservationist from the USDA's Natural Resource Conservation Services, to the podium. Uh, they'll say a few words about the background of the Hearthstone Dam, the timeline for its funding and rehabilitation and the benefit to the community. Mike and Edwin, come on up. Hello, my name is Michael Jimenez. I'm with the Headwaters Conservation District. Uh, we're responsible for the operation and maintenance of 11 flood control dams in Augusta County. Five other additional dams are included, and these are City of Stanton, City of Waynesboro, Augusta County Service Authority, U.S. Forest Service, and Department of Corrections. Our dams are inspected annually by staff and state engineers. This helps to determine all the maintenance needs or any deficiencies the dam may have. Some of the maintenance items that we do, like this dam, include mowing, herbicide control, tree removal, storm preparation, small dam repairs, and major rehab. So far, Headwaters has had a total of five dams rehabilitated. This would be the fifth one. Uh, the reasons for the rehabilitation, you know, the population has increased. Residential and commercial development is continuing both upstream and downstream from the dams. Land use has changed. Uh, the components on the, on the structure have deteriorated and no longer function. Uh, many of the dams do not meet current dam safety requirements, and they're nearing the end of their 50-year lifespan. The dams need rehabilitating to ensure that they remain safe, continue to function as designed, and continue to providing benefits for the folks downstream. A little bit about Hearthstone. The dam was built in 1966. It's located on U.S. Forest Service land. It's considered a high hazard dam. This means that if the dam were to fail, there's a high potential for loss of life, loss of life or property. The dam is approximately 107 feet tall, 705 feet long with a surface area of 12 acres at normal pool. It provides flood protection to roughly 250 homes downstream, including the town of Bridgewater. Concerns were raised whether the dam could withstand a major storm event along with the internal integrity of the dam. So the county and local sponsors brought on Schnabel Engineering to do some internal investigating and it was determined that the structure did meet NRCS internal compatibility and instead a graded filter drain was installed to provide better filtration throughout the foundation of the dam. The rehab also included riser modification, hardware upgrades, spillway improvements, roadway repairs, uh, new staff and stage gauges for the observers. The total cost of the rehab, $3.7 million. NRCS contributed 65%. Augusta County contributed 35% of the cost. The Harson rehab was completed in May of 2020, and the construction was done by Hattie Shell Excavating. Uh, the project not only brought the structure in compliance with state and federal requirements, but also now ensures the safety of people downstream for the next 68 years. And I would also like to thank everyone involved with the rehab project 
A special thanks to Augusta County for the full support and cooperation during our dam rehab efforts. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Edwin Martinez. Martinez. I am the state conservationist for the USDA NRCS. As you may know, NRCS is known to be the number one conservation agency in the nation. In Virginia, we have 41 offices and about 175 team members. Thank you for the opportunity to be part of this program to highlight our shared responsibility for maintaining structures like the Upper North River 77 and increase awareness of the importance of preparedness if the unthinkable happens. NRCS offers financial and technical assistance to watershed programs to help project sponsors upgrade <coughs> aging dams that are reaching the end of their uh, design lives. We're also there to support rebuilding efforts after natural disasters using our emergency watershed protection program. The agency has worked with local sponsors to construct 11,845 dams projects nationwide since 1948 and is now embarking a new nationwide effort to upgrade infrastructure in priority watersheds around the nation. In April, USDA announced a second round of funding for a wide range of projects that represent a once-in-a-generation opportunity to strengthen partnerships for public safety. The $420 million provided 132 projects in 31 states, included a $190,000 allocation for Roaring Fork Lake Dam in central Pennsylvania County. These projects are a great example of partnership using the local-led process to address needs for new watershed infrastructure and upgrades to existing NRCS dams. In every case, we work alongside with local sponsors to develop a sound strategy for building back better. Now, I would like to introduce our state conservation engineer, Matt Lyons, who will share more details on our past and present collaboration to rehabilitate dams in Virginia. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Martinez. NRCS has been in the dam safety business for over 50 years here in Virginia, partnering with districts and local governments to help reduce risks to lives and property by the construction of 150 flood control structures. The story of this particular dam, Hearthstone, began in 1960 when what was then the Soil Conservation Service assisted the local sponsors in what was then the Shenandoah Valley Soil and Water Conservation District with development of a watershed plan to assist with local flooding needs. The Headwater Soil and Water Conservation District assumed operation and maintenance responsibility for this high hazard dam when it was completed in 1966. The dam provided flood control for more than 40 years but was showing signs of wear when the district applied for assistance in preparing a watershed plan supplement in 2012. Our project team completed a supplement to the original watershed plan and environmental assessment in July in 2015 that included upgrades to meet current state and NRCS criteria. As Michael pointed out, NRCS provided 65% of the funding and local sponsors provided the other 35%. The modifications completed in 2020 will help Upper North River 77, Hearthstone Lake Dam, continue to provide the many benefits for years to come. This project is a great example of cooperation and collaboration involving a host of conservationists and technical experts from Augusta County, the Headwater Soil and Water Conservation District, and DCR's Division of Soil and Water, and Dam Safety. Thank you. Thank you, Matt, Michael, and Dr. Martinez. We appreciate those words and really highlighting that this is a team effort across all parties, state, local, and federal partners to make this happen. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to our regional engineer for this area of the state. His name is Justin Deal. He's been with DCR since September of 2020. Um, prior to that, he was with the Army Corps of Engineers and he's also worked for VDOT. 
um, but he has primary oversight and responsibility for this area. So Justin, if you wouldn't mind coming forward. Thank you, Wendy. Dams provide many benefits to communities, including drinking water storage, hydroelectric power, flood control, economic and agricultural opportunities, improved wildlife habitat, and endless opportunities for recreation. However, these benefits are not without costs and responsibilities, not just for the dam owner, but each individual member of the community that is potentially affected by a dam. The population at risk for Hearthstone alone includes nearly 300 homes and businesses, including much of the nearby town of Bridgewater and several other Augusta County communities. Dam owners have a responsibility to maintain their dams and to have an emergency action plan on file with local and state authorities and must work with federal and state regulators to comply with dam safety standards. And as a community members, you should know the dams in your area where you live and work and be aware of potential maintenance issues. Report those issues to the owners and to the authorities. You should inform your neighbors and friends about the benefits and risks associated with dams. And if you live in a dam break inundation zone, know your evacuation routes and maintain flood insurance, as Matt talked about earlier, as a homeowner, homeowners policies generally do not cover flood events. Purchasing flood insurance and having an emergency action plan in place for your family or business can save you money and potentially prevent loss of life due to a dam failure upstream. So now I'd like to introduce Mr. Charles Wilson with DCR's Division of Soil and Water Conservation. Thank you. Welcome, I'm Charles Wilson. I am the district dam engineer. I um, help the districts who own, operate, and maintain flood control dams just like Hearthstone right behind us. There are 12 districts in the state that uh, are responsible for 104 dams. And as you can imagine, that's a lot of work with most of them being high hazard. Um, my duties help them, as we mentioned before, help them with EAPs, doing tabletop exercises, um, inspections as needed and all other things that are um, compliant with the regulations. In addition, we also um, do a small dam repair project thing which helps them provide monies to do some of those um, projects that are just beyond maintenance to keep them um, compliant with the regulations. Um, and then specifically with um, Hearthstone here is I started with DCR in 2016, and as you heard from NRCS, this uh, project started in 2012, so it has about as much seniority with DCR as I do. And it just goes to highlight how long these projects take from start to finish, so they're not something that's you know quick and happens, and it takes a lot of um, help and input from the community. And uh, as you've heard it before, I'd like to thank them again. There's Headwater, Soil and Water Conservation District, Augusta County, NRCS, the U.S. Forest Service was very helpful since this is on forest land. Um, Schnabel Engineering has done a lot of good work to both design it and work through all the process and the time it took to get where we are now. The contractor, Howdy Shell, um, DCR, both Dam Safety and our division has helped out. And another thing to remember is this took money and the Virginia Legislature, I think, also helped you know, put money towards this because it is such an important topic. And with that, our, our work isn't done with just this one dam. As Michael mentioned, this is the fifth rehab that they've done, and we're actually in the process of finishing or getting ready to start up the sixth one, and, and hopefully we're hoping to break ground on that sometime this year, and we still have more in the queue, so there's more work to be done, and I know we're partnering with NRCS hopefully to really you know get as much done with the resources we have available to us and, and I'd like to thank you all for coming out and with that I'm going to turn it over to Jonathan Pittman from Schnabel Engineering to talk more about the engineering. Thanks, Charles. Good morning, everyone. 
Uh, so Schnabel, as you've heard, is the engineer record for this project. So what we were responsible for is really where we started was a geotechnical investigation to characterize the embankment and the foundation and work. NRCS had already started some design work and to build on that. So we completed the design and then followed through with construction administration and oversight services. And I just want to say you know, this was an extremely rewarding project. Schnabel was honored to be a part of it. As you've heard from many folks here, working with a large team to come together towards a common goal and really, you know, address the dam safety requirements here, extend the service life of this structure and protect downstream communities for years to come. So, you know, we don't we work in dams every day and you don't always see such a collaborative, coordinated team effort to come together towards that goal. So it's really refreshing and rewarding to see it. Uh, just real quickly to build on a couple things of the rehabilitation of this project. A lot of it you can't see or you can't tell what was done. Uh, and, and so in some ways uh, that's, that's a good thing. It, it's doing what it needs to do to address the dam safety requirements. Uh, a big part of that is below where all our vehicles are parked was putting in a tow drain, a large tow drain system to address seepage through the foundation. And that required an extensive excavation down to foundation bedrock. That excavation actually extended all the way up to the top of the dam. But that addresses uh, you know, filter compatibility and seepage issues, as well as where you're standing right now and you see some of these pictures. We're, we, if we were in the middle of construction and you're standing under about 50 feet of stockpiled soil material right here. So that material was taken off of the dam to construct that tow drain. And when this dam was built, it had a lot of real rocky, large uh, particles in it. And those don't necessarily meet today's requirements. So all of that material had to be processed down here where you're standing, the rock particles broken down and then replaced. Uh, you'll see it when we walk up top, but some additional work that was done here was to address spillway capacity requirements to make sure this dam could pass the required design storm, so widening that spillway. Also, as you see in some of these photos here, addressing, these are two on the left, the principal spillway riser, extending the service life of that structure by replacing metals and trash racks, also improving the gate system. And there were a host of other uh, operation and maintenance type improvements as a part of this project. So again, it's a great project, uh, great to see a team come together and achieve achieve a goal to meet dam safety requirements and improve public safety. So I want to say thank you to everyone who came out today, bared the heat, and, and really just understands um, why this is so important. It's not just a dam. It is a life-saving structure. It was built for flood control. There are things that we cannot see that make this structure um, viable and safe. And that is what happened with all of this collaboration. Um, I want to thank Governor Youngkin for his recognition of the importance of Dam Safety Awareness Day and the issuance of that proclamation to raise awareness across the Commonwealth so that people who are everyday citizens who live or recreate near a dam understand the importance of dam safety. I want to thank our state and local partners, our agency leadership, the secretary's office, everyone for being out here today um, to help us with this event. Mm -hmm.